Episode 1, Medici. Hello and welcome to the first episode of the Royal and Noble Houses of Europe. In this series, we will look at the genealogy of European royal and noble families. This is your host, Joshua, and for today's episode, we will look at the family tree of the House of Medici. Let's get right into it. The House of Medici was an Italian banking family in Florence, whose family came from the agricultural Muglo region in Tuscany. The Medici's wealth originated from the textile trade fostered by the renowned guild industry of Florence. Like other Italian noble families, the Medici dominated their city's government and were able to bring Florence under their power. It was under the rule of Cosimo the Magnificent that Florence became the center of the Italian Renaissance, creating an environment in which art and humanism flourished like never before. Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Raphael, Machiavelli, and Botticelli were one of the few figures whose works were funded by the Medicis. The Medici Bank was the largest financial institution in Europe from its establishment in 1397 to its fall in 1494, making the Medici family the wealthiest in the continent for a time. The wealthy institution enabled the Medicis to acquire significant political power in central Italy, becoming de facto rulers of Florence for over two centuries. In addition to acquiring the hereditary title Duke of Florence in 1532 and the Grand Duke in 1569, the Medici produced four popes, Leo X, Clement VII, Bias IV, and Leo XI, and two queens of France, Catherine and Marie. We start from Giovanni di Bisida Medici, founder of the influential Medici Bank and patriarch of the Medici family. He had two sons who would go on to be the head of the senior and junior branch of the Medici family, respectively. His eldest son was Cosimo the Elder, who reigned as Lord of Florence for thirty years from 1434 to 1464. He had a son named Piero the Gatti, who succeeded him as Lord of Florence from 1464 to 1469. Piero had two sons who go ruled as Lord of Florence. His eldest son was Lorenzo the Magnificent, considered to be the most influential Medici ruler of Florence and a great patron of the Renaissance. He ruled from 1469 until his death in 1492. Lorenzo's younger brother, Giuliano, was known as the handsome, sporting, golden boy, complementing his brother's image as the patron of the arts. He had a son named Giulio who would go on to become Pope Clement VII, the second Medici Pope who ruled from 1523 to 1534. He is often considered as the most unfortunate of the popes due to the rapid succession of political, military, and religious struggles that marked his reign, that is sack of Rome by Emperor Charles V, during which the pope himself was imprisoned. Coming back to Lorenzo, he had three sons, Piero, Giovanni, and Giuliano. His eldest son Piero, nicknamed the Unfortunate, succeeded him as Lord of Florence from 1492 to 1494. His short reign came to an end when he was forced to go to exile when King Charles VIII of France invaded Tuscany. His younger brother Giovanni became the first pope from the House of Medici as Pope Leo X. His papacy was marked by the outbreak of the Protestant Reformation with the publication of Martin Luther's 95 Theses. His reign also saw progress on the rebuilding of St. Peter's Basilica and the reorganization of Roman University, which promoted the study of literature poetry, and antiquities. Finally, Giuliano ruled as Lord of Florence from 1513 to 1516 when the Medici family was restored to power after the Holy League drove the French forces from Italy. He was also invested with the title Duke of Nemes by King Francis I of France, his wife's nephew. Giuliano's illegitimate son, Ippolito, ruled Florence from 1523 to 1527 after which he was created a cardinal by his cousin Pope Clement VII. Coming back to Piero, he had a son named Lorenzo II, Lord of Florence from 1516 until his death in 1519. He was also made Duke of Urbino by Pope Leo X. As a side note, Lorenzo was to whom Niccolò Machiavelli dedicated his famous political treatise, The Prince, to inform him of tactics to use to maintain his authority. Lorenzo's daughter, Catherine, became Queen of France via a marriage to the future King Henry II of France, which was arranged by Pope Clement VII. Her father died shortly after she was born, leaving her to be raised by her papal cousins instead. 
Catherine was excluded from participating in state affairs during her husband's reign, who favoured his chief mistress, Diane de Poitiers. Henry's death, however, thrust Catherine into the political arena as mother of Kings Francis II and Charles IX, wielding substantive power as regent from 1559 to 1563. Even though she is held responsible for brutal persecutions of Huguenots as in the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre of 1572, she is also credited as the sole guardian of the last Valois kings, a great patron of the arts, and an adopter of rich Italian culture to the French court. Regardless of her success, she was one of the most powerful women in the 16th century. Catherine's half-brother, Alessandro, nicknamed the more due to his dark complexion. He reigned as Duke of Florence from 1532 until his assassination in 1537 by his distant cousin, Lorenzino. His untimely death caused the Duchy of Florence to pass to the family's junior branch. Let us trace the junior branch of the Medici family starting from Lorenzo the Elder. Born as the son of Giovanni de' Medici, Lorenzo dedicated himself to banking activity. In addition to holding several positions in the Florentine Republic as an ambassador to the Holy See and the Republic of Venice. He is primarily known as the progenitor of the Popolani, or populist, line of the Medici family, which succeeded the senior branch in the Duchy of Florence eventually elevated the realm to the Grand Duchy. By his fourth great-granddaughter, Marie, he is an ancestor to seven kings of France beginning with Louis XIII. Lorenzo had a son named Pier Francesco, who served as an ambassador to the Duchy of Mantua in 1463. He was orphaned in 1440 and was raised by his uncle Cosimo. After Cosimo's death, Pier Francesco sided against his cousin, Piero the Gauti, participating in a failed coup to overthrow his lordship in 1466. He was later forgiven by Piero and thenceforth took care of the family bank. He is the father of two sons. Lorenzo and Giovanni. His eldest son, Lorenzo, was a man encrypted with liberal views, and an avid poet and an art connoisseur. He commissioned an illuminated manuscript of Dante Alighieri's Divine Comedy featuring artwork by Botticelli. When Lorenzo the Magnificent died in 1492, he and his brother Giovanni sided against the late ruler's son, Piero the Unfortunate, who exiled them. They returned shortly after Florence was overthrown by the French and a republican government came into place, hence their nickname Popolano, Plebeian, for siding with the Republican Party. He became one of the most outstanding figures of the Florentine Republic, regarded by many as the cultural heir of Lorenzo the Magnificent. His son, Pier Francesco the Younger, dedicated himself to the family banking and acted as an ambassador to the Papal States in 1522. His son Lorenzino became famous for assassinating his cousin, Alessandro, the last Duke of Florence from the senior branch of the Medici family. Consequently, he was murdered in Venice by two hired killers. Lorenzo's younger brother resembled his brother in his passion for classical studies and books, later creating a library with an extensive volume of manuscripts and codexes. He had a son named Lodovico, better known as Giovanni, the last condottiero of the Papal States. His nickname, Giovanni del Bandnia, or Giovanni of the Black Bands, came from the black stripes on his insignia as a symbol of mourning for the death of Pope Leo X. His son Cosimo would go on to become the first Grand Duke of Tuscany, initially ruling as Duke of Florence from 1537 and Grand Duke until his death in 1574. Cosimo rose from a modest background in the Mugello to gain supremacy over the entire Tuscany. He prevailed in a number of battles to conquer Florence's longtime rival Cena against the opposition of Catherine de' Medici and Pope Paul III. He also purchased the island of Elba from Genoa to base the Tuscan navy. Cosimo was succeeded by his eldest son Francesco, who reigned as Grand Duke of Tuscany from 1574 to 1587. His inability to produce male heirs led to the succession of his younger brother, Ferdinando. Francesco had two daughters from his marriage with Archduchess Joanna of Austria, Eleanor and Marie. Eleanor became Duchess of Manchu and Montferrat by her marriage with Vincenzo I Gonzaga, member of the influential Gonzaga family in northern Italy. Her younger sister Marie became Queen Consort of France as the second wife of King Henry IV of France. She acted as regent for her son, King Louis XIII, 
hence she is the grandmother of Louis XIV the Sun King, when he was a minor. She is an ancestor of numerous European monarchs. Cosimo's eldest daughter was Isabella Romella de' Medici, Duchess of Bracciano by her marriage to Paolo Giordano Orsini. She remained in her household after her marriage, giving her an unusual degree of independence for a woman of her period. She was likely to be murdered after the death of her father. Cosimo's second son was a cardinal named Giovanni. After having been Archbishop of Pisa, he was created cardinal by Pope Pius IV when he was only 17. He died a year later. Cosimo's fourth child was Lucrezia, Duchess of Ferrara by marriage to Alfonso II. Like her sister, she was likely poisoned by her husband, leaving her dead at age 16. The youngest child of Cosimo was Virginia, Duchess of Modena and Reggio by marriage to Cesaredist. As regent of Modena and Reggio during the absence of her husband, she was able to protect the city from the attacks of the local boadster. Her husband's infidelities led to a permanent mental illness, which lasted until her death at age 46. Ferdinando, the third Grand Duke of Tuscany, was the third eldest surviving son of Cosimo, succeeding his brother in 1587. He was initially made a cardinal at an early age, but was never ordained into the priesthood. Instead, he proved an able administrator, founding the Villa Medici in Rome and acquiring many works of art. As the ruler, he was quite the opposite of his brother in many ways. Approachable and generous, he set out to rule mildly and was genuinely concerned about the welfare of his people. During his reign, Tuscany revived and regained stability for the first time since the death of his father. He also fostered commerce and gained great wealth through the Medici banks, while enacting an edict of tolerance for Jews and heretics, making Tuscany a haven for Spanish Jews and other foreigners. It was also at this time that opera was introduced to Europe by Florence. Upon his death, he was succeeded by his eldest son, Cosimo II. Cosimo II ruled Tuscany from 1609 to 1621. Due to his father's precarious death, Cosimo did not actively participate in state affairs, but he was a great patron of arts and sciences, best remembered as the patron of Galileo Galilei, his childhood tutor. He died aged 30 and was succeeded by his son, Ferdinando II. His sister, Catherine, was Duchess of Mantua and Montferrat as the second wife of Ferdinando Gonzaga, and was the suo jury governor of Sina from 1627 to 1629. She was known for intense piety, acting as the financial supporter of the reconstruction of the Basilica of San Lorenzo. Her younger brother, Carlo, was raised to the garden late by Pope Paul V in 1615 and later made Cardinal Bishop of Ostia and Dean of the College of Cardinals. He had a successful career in the Catholic Church for the rest of his life. Ferdinando's youngest daughter was Claudia, Duchess of Urbino and Archduchess of Further Austria as the wife of Federico della Rovia and Leopold V, respectively. Claudia's daughter, Vittoria, later became Grand Duchess Consort of Tuscany by marrying her first cousin, Ferdinando II. Cosimo II had six children by his marriage with Archduchess Maria Madeleine of Austria. His eldest son, Ferdinando II, was Grand Duke of Tuscany for 49 years from 1621 to 1670. Ferdinando, like his father, was a patron of Galileo Galilei. However, his reign was marked by the beginning of Tuscany's long economic decline in addition to an outbreak of the plague that killed 10% of the population. He married his cousin, Vittoria della Rovia, in 1633 and had two children, Cosimo and Marie. The two became estranged shortly after Ferdinando was caught committing an adultery. Tuscany participated in the wars of Castro under his reign, the last time Medici in Tuscany was involved in a military conflict. By the time Pope Urban VII's forces were defeated in 1643, the economy became so decrepit that barter trade became prevalent in marketplaces. His younger brother, Giancarlo, pursued the ecclesiastical career at a young age. He joined the Sovereign Military Order of Malta and was named Grand Prior of Pisa as a teenager. In 1644, Pope Innocent X created him a cardinal deacon as a way of consolidating his ties with the Medici family. He was responsible for welcoming Queen Christina of Sweden, a new convert to Roman Catholicism, to Rome in 1655. 
Margarita was the eldest daughter of Cosimo to reach adulthood. She became Duchess of Paramount Piacenza by her marriage to Odo Ardofanese, ruling the Duchy's region during the minority of her son. Her brother, Macias, was the third son of Grand Duke Cosimo II and Governor of Sina from 1629 to 1667, with two interruptions in between. He never married. Anna, Archduchess of Further Austria by marriage with Ferdinand Charles, was the mother of Claudia Felicitas, Empress Consort for Leopold I, Holy Roman Emperor. Like many Medicis, Anna was a great lover and patron of the arts. Leopoldo was the youngest child of Cosimo II, becoming a cardinal after the death of his brother, Giancarlo. He took a great interest in science and technology, founding the Accademia del Cimento, Academy of Experiment, in 1657 to promote Galileo Galilei's scientific method. He also left a wide correspondence with scientists and artists of his time. Coming back to Ferdinando II, he had two sons by his marriage to Vittoria, Cosimo III and Francesco Maria. His elder son Cosimo was the penultimate Medici Grand Duke of Tuscany, reigning for 53 years from 1670 to 1723, the longest in Tuscan history. His long reign was marked by an unprecedented economic recession in Tuscany. When his son was left with no surviving male heir, he fruitlessly attempted to have his daughter Anna Maria Luisa recognized as the heiress of Tuscany. Cosimo had a younger brother named Francesco Maria, governor of Siena from 1683 until his death in 1711. He was also raised to the cardinalate by Pope Innocent XI. Upon his mother's death in 1694, Ferdinando succeeded to the duchies of Rovere and Montefeltro, the position he held until his death. Cosimo's eldest son, Ferdinando, was heir to his father as Grand Prince of Tuscany, the title he held until his death in 1713. He is best remembered as a patron of music, who attracted famed musicians to Florence and funded the invention of the piano by Bartolomeo Cristofori. Cosimo's second son succeeded his brother as the seventh and last Medician Grand Duke of Tuscany in 1723. He had no children from his marriage to Anna Maria Franziska of Saxe-Leinburg, whom he despised. His reign was marked by the reversal of his predecessor's conservative policy, however, lacking male heirs, the European powers gave the throne to Francis Stephen of Lorraine, future Emperor Francis I, ending almost 300 years of Medici rule in Florence. His younger sister, Anna Maria Luisa, was the last surviving descendant of the main branch of the Medici family. Electress Palatine by marriage to Johann Wilhelm, she inherited Tuscany's great art collection after her brother's death. Her death in 1743 brought the Grand Ducal House of Medici to an end. All in all, the Medicis had a tremendous influence in the early modern Italian history and contributed greatly to the rebirth of arts and sciences during the Renaissance. Without them, the city of Florence as it is now wouldn't have existed. Thank you for staying until the end and I hope you enjoyed this video. In the next episode, we will look at the family tree of the House of Bonaparte and its history. Thank you for watching.